G'day everyone, welcome to another Azure Roundup session. This time we have our fellow Microsoft technical trainer, Uncle Bardwaj, who is going to be covering off app service integration with virtual networks. So Uncle, welcome and thanks for running the session today, mate. Thank you, George, for having me here. Um, glad to have um, joined yourself and millions of our subscribers um, on this video. Well, well, maybe we might get to millions one day. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what we'd do with the um with that little service thingy. Maybe I could have it in the background or something if we get to that, mate. But yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. So what have you got for you? What what have you got for us today, mate? So we've got a really interesting topic for us today. Uh, what we'll cover uh, of today would be app services integration with Azure Virtual Networks. And specifically, I'm going to be focusing on the incoming traffic to my app services from the Azure Virtual Network. So that's uh, what we are going to concentrate in today's session. Yeah, and this is pretty cool because it's something I think a lot of people are looking for have been sorry have been looking for for quite a long time with um our app service environment. So, um, so can, are you actually able to explain what an app service is initially before we kick off? Absolutely. So let's um, go to our whiteboard friend. No worries. All right, George. So your question was um, a quick introduction to app services. Let's do yep. that. So we'll use um, our friend Whiteboard here to guide us through the session. So first of all, what is an app service? App service, as I described, is our fully managed uh, platform as a service, which helps us to deploy um, various types of applications, such as your web applications, your backend mobile apps, as well as um, our API apps on the Azure platform. And we can also have Azure functions in there as well, can't we? Absolutely, yes. So yeah. uh, recently we have added um, Azure functions to this type of capability as well. Mm. So different capabilities and different options is what we offer with um, app services. Awesome. Now, um, as, as I should also mention here that app services was one of our first platform as a service that we launched back in the day. So this was our V1 offering on how we sort of run various types of PaaS solutions within the Azure cloud ecosystem. Now, one another point that I should mention here because you've asked about app services is uh, where do these app services run? So app services typically run on something called the app services plans. So app services plans are nothing but the underneath compute unit where my web apps are running. So just think about them in layman's language as your virtual machines. So let's say right. these are three virtual machines that are a part of my app services plans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up one or more app service on these app services plans. So mm -hmm. let's say this is my app service one. Okay. And the beauty is that you can run multiple app services on these app service plans. So we give you that capability to save a bit of money while you're running multiple apps at the same time, as well as ensuring that you don't have to manage, you know, the underneath compute. You don't have to manage the updates, patching, all of those mundane tasks that I used to hate when I was a sysadmin back in the days. So this is um, the, the good bit about the app service plans. Mm -hmm. Now, one another aspect of app services plans that I should highlight in context to our today's topic is that with every app service plan, we get one public IP address for incoming traffic. And we get multiple outbound IP addresses for the outgoing traffic from the ecosystem. So this is um, something that we need to remember for incoming it's one and for outgoing it's multiple IP addresses. So in short, this is what an app service is and it runs on the app service plan. Okay, that's great. So on-prem potentially it would have been something like uh, one or multiple servers with IIS if it was Windows or let me get my Linux hat on uh, Apache for Linux, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're correct. So this is just a replacement of that really fantastic service takes about three to five minutes to spin up and we can migrate our web apps onto these ones. That's a very good use case that I have seen a lot in the industry. Cool. All right, so the next aspect, and this is a requirement that I get from a lot of our customers when app services was introduced back in the days was, great, I want to run my front-end web applications that are exposed to the internet. Hey, 
Good job. Um, app services can do that natively. However, we have a lot of customers who have built in in-house applications or business applications that are only available internally to their organization. Now, the way any as service works in Azure is that it is accessible over the internet by default. So anyone, yourself, me, or any one of our viewers can just straight away, you know, hit that particular URL of the relevant PaaS service and they can access it. This works really well for our front-end applications, but think about those internal business applications, George. How am I able to restrict, um, you know, access to those applications only from a very specific virtual network? or even go to the next level. Uh, what do I do to make sure that connectivity is not there over the internet? It's only accessible over the private uh, virtual networks, be it in Azure or be it in my corporate head office or various branch offices. These are the two common requirements that I'm sure you would have got from your end customers as well. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what we as Microsoft did to overcome this challenge was to sort of introduce two different services over the period of time. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is talk about the two different types of services that can help us to overcome this particular challenge. So let's flick the whiteboard a bit up and let's talk about the first service. So the first service is what we called as service endpoint. Right. Okay, so there are, are there any particular limitations with service endpoints? Um, there are a few limitations, and I'll talk about them as we talk about service endpoints. All right, no worries. All right, so uh, service endpoint, first of all, what is it? So service endpoint provides us uh, with the capability to connect to our past services uh, over a secure backbone Microsoft network. So the key term or the aspect that you need to remember is connectivity, to pass service over the backbone Microsoft network. So you're not going over the internet to access your um, pass service. What you're doing is you're using the backbone Microsoft network to access these services. So let's draw this out, right? We, we'd love to see some visuals. So let's say, first of all, we've got an Azure virtual network in my region. So this is VNet1. Let's put the IP address range 192.168.0.0 slash 16. And let's carve out subnet one with a range of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Now within this particular subnet, let's add a virtual machine here. So this is my VM1. And now I've also got an app service that is running here within the ecosystem. Now, by default, I said that app services can be accessed anywhere over the internet. Mm -hmm. So they've got a public IP address. So this is going to be the default behavior if VM1 wants to connect to the app service. It will go over the internet. which is not really great for our enterprise uh, customers because they don't want to expose this internal business application um, uh, to the internet. They want that access to be restricted within my virtual network itself. So what do we do here? Um, with service endpoint, what we're essentially saying here is that we are going to access this um, app service over a public IP address. So we are still using a public IP address to access it. However, now we are going to use the Azure Backbone Network. So this is going okay. to be my service endpoint implementation. So it's essentially ensuring the packet does not uh, go out to the internet. It's saying within the data center, correct? Correct. So what this essentially means for our customers is that they are, um, they are able to access various PaaS services such as your app services, Azure storage services, various types of PaaS databases such as your Cosmos, SQL databases, and so, so on and so forth, only through a specific virtual network. So think about it as a bit of a way of putting some firewalling as well at the same time. So now I can restrict, you know, um, app service getting uh, traffic from specific Azure virtual networks rather than the entire uh, internet. Hmm. 
All right. So um, are you excited to see a quick demo on how I can figure this one? Always excited to see a demo, mate, especially from you. Fantastic. So let us now switch to our portal. So this is where we have a portal. Um, now, George, what I've done for uh, today's demonstration here is to create several different web applications. So let me quickly highlight that. We have, let's search for app services. So I've got uh, two app services that I'm running. Um, we, we call them as Azure Roundup App 1 and Azure Roundup App uh, Private Endpoint. So these are the two different okay. web apps that we are going to be using today. Now, um, what I've also done for today's demonstration is to create a virtual network. And let's quickly scroll through this one. So within VNets, I've got a VNet called VNet East US. So this is based in East US. I always try to put the naming convention there so it's easier for us to identify. Yeah. And within the specific VNet, what I've done is I've created several different subnets. So for the service endpoint, I'm going to be using this particular one, which is called service endpoint subnet. All right, so let's see how the integration works for service endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll on the left hand side of my VNet, and I'm going to click on this option for service endpoint. So let's click here. And now what we'll do is we'll click on this add button and we'll add a service endpoint for our web application service. So let's select a service. So these are all of the different types of uh, services that are available today to us when we integrate with service endpoint. The likes of your Azure Active Directory, Cosmos database, SQL storage, and for um, app services, we'll look at Microsoft.web. This is the service provider that we'll enable. And then I'll have to select a specific subnet. So I'm going to select my subnet uh, called service endpoint subnet and click on add. So this is the first aspect where I'm enabling service endpoint for a particular subnet within a VNet. The next bit that I'm going to do is to go to my app service now, and we'll have to do a bit of stuff there as well to make this uh, fully functional. So let's uh, move to our app service. And now what I'm going to do is scroll down a bit and go to the networking tab. Got it. So there's a lot of hidden magic uh, in this networking tab. A lot of us uh, tend to ignore it, but uh, let's explore this one. So what we are going to do today is focus on this inbound traffic. And what we are going to do for this particular setup is configure access restriction. So this is, think about this as a way of uh, virtual firewalling at your um, app service itself. So I'm going to create a rule. And the rule name would be Azure VNet access. All right, give it a priority. Let's say 300. Um, you can give it an optional description as well. It's not mandatory. Um, the next bit is you're going to select your source type. So it could be your IPv4 or IPv6 address. You could mm -hmm. use a virtual network or a service stack. So let's right. use the virtual network today. I'm going to select my subscription my virtual network that I had created previously, and then the subnet. So this is the most important aspect where I'm going to select my subnet. Yep. Once I've done this, if I want to create any HTTP headers, optional settings, we can configure those once. If not, we'll just add this rule. And what this uh, essentially means for us is we have uh, fully integrated our app services with service endpoint. Nice. Now, you did ask me a question before. Are there any limitations with yes. service endpoint, right? Very yes. important question. So I would say there are two limitations. The first one is, um, as we saw, service endpoints are still going to query my app services over a public IP address. So for uh, certain enterprises, that's not great. Uh, they want to bring everything within their uh, VNet IP address range itself to make it easier. That's the first bit. Second bit is if we go back to our virtual network quickly, while we were enabling service endpoint, we did see that there were very few services that are available. So if you hmm. count, there are about 10 to 15 services only that are available. This is not great because we actually offer more than 30 odd pass services that our customers can use to get the ball rolling. Hmm. So these are the sort of two limitations that I have seen with service endpoint. 
All right. So let's um, switch back to our friend Whiteboard now. And mm -hmm. um, let's talk about some of the different ways by which we can overcome these two limitations. Now, what we as Microsoft did to sort of um, overcome these two challenges was to come up with another service called Private Endpoint. So first of all, what is that private endpoint? So private endpoint enables private and secure access to various Azure Pass services. Now, one limitation that we saw with service endpoint was lack of uh, different types of Pass services. We have overcome that limitation with private endpoints. Mm -hmm. And how we do that secure access and connectivity uh, with our Pass services is by giving a specific IP address to each of our past service. So now this sort of fully covers us end to end. So what I'm doing with um, this particular service is I'm essentially assigning a private IP address from one of our virtual network subnet, and that IP address will be used by the other Azure resources to connect and access various types of PaaS resources. App services, as we know, is one of uh, those PaaS service itself. So let's quickly draw this one here. So we've got our VNet and we've got Subnet 1. Let's give it a range 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We'll keep the same um, IP convention. And now let's put our app services here again. So now uh, with private links, the way this is going to work is I'm going to carve out a specific IP address in form of a private endpoint. So think about it as a virtual NIC at the end of the day. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to create this private link for my um, app service and I'm going to assign this one. So let's say the IP address that we assign here is 192.168.1.10. All right. So, so that essentially means my PaaS service has a presence within the VNet as with a private IP. Correct. So now your app service has a presence within your virtual network and all of the other resources that reside within that same VNet can also query um, all of your PaaS services with this private IP address itself rather than um, you know, accessing it over the public IP address. And this okay. doesn't stop here. You also access all of this over the backbone Microsoft network. Okay. Um, so does that mean it, it is now not accessible to any public facings? Uh, so I guess there's no, is there no public IP to that service now? Absolutely. So as soon as you enable private endpoint to your web application, you disable all of the public access. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, you can create multiple private endpoints in other VNets and subnets as well for this particular app service. As So you can have um, one private endpoint with a specific IP address querying the app service, another one with another different IP address to query this one. Awesome. All right, now I've got a really good question for you then, mate, because the thing that pops into my head is what we used to have to do was have an app service environment, which was quite expensive to be able to do this in the past. Um, so what particular app service plans or SKUs, stock keeping units, um, is required for integration using a private link? Really good question, George. So um, that's a very valid point that you mentioned. So this, the app service plans that we support here, let me write this down for everyone's um, help as well. So we've got your premium V2, v3 and there is a app service plan for functions as well so functions premium is what it is called all of these support the concept of um, private endpoints okay so now you can um, get all of that security that you really wanted for your enterprise application which was only meant for in-house access at um, a very cheaper cost compared to what we had with app services environment hmm. 
Now, awesome. you know, we talked about having multiple endpoints for each VNet. So if I give you a number, you can create up to 1000 private endpoints per virtual network. So this is um, something that uh, we need to be aware of if we really want to hit that number. Go for it. <laughs> That's private, a lot of private. I can, I can imagine some enterprises definitely um, easily hitting that, considering some of the scale that, uh, that some of these companies do. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, let's not just stop here. Think about um, our hybrid scenarios, because we, we know that uh, our customers uh, are deeply uh, embedded into that hybrid uh, computing architecture today. So with private endpoints, what, what I can also do is I can extend the scenario to my on-premises data center. So let's say if I had, this was my on-prem, and I had connected my on-premises data center to the Azure ecosystem using either your express route or a site-to-site -site VPN. Either or option is fine. What I can now do is, because I've uh, configured routing between my on-prem and my virtual network, which has my private endpoint, I can access my app service using this uh, private IP address from my on-premises environment as well. So it doesn't mean that my users must be connected only into my Azure virtual network to access it, but they can also mm -hmm. access this from their um, on-premises environment as well. So are you ready for a, a quick demonstration on how private endpoints work? I'm ready, more ready than ever, mate. More ready than ever, fantastic. So let's uh, flick back to our portal here. And this time, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch out from here and um, I'm gonna go straight to my app service. So I said, I've created two different app services. So I'll mm. select the second one now. And within the app service, um, I'll go back to the networking tab. And then within the networking tab now, will concentrate on private endpoints. So let's uh, click here, and then we'll click on the add button. And this is the first step, so I'm gonna give it a name. So private endpoint, I'll select my subscription, my virtual network, and then I'm going to select my specific subnet for which I want to enable this service for. So private endpoint subnet. Um, now, as I mentioned with private endpoints, we take care of the DNS resolution as well. And how we sort of do that is by integrating private endpoints with uh, the private Azure DNS zones. So within the GUI itself, we give you this option. If you click on yes, we will in the backend create a new uh, private DNS zone for you and we will add relevant records. So you don't have to uh, do any of those tasks. So we fully automate that experience. Very nice. So to make it easy, click on OK, and this is going to add it. All right, George. So as you can see, it took us uh, two minutes to provision this particular service, nice and quick. What you can do is you can click on the refresh button, uh, give it uh, a minute or two, and there we go, the magic is all done. Private endpoint is now configured. So if I take a step back, exit out of this, uh, back to my original screen, I can see I've got a private endpoint provisioned uh, for my virtual application. That's the first bit. And the second bit is now within my inbound address, I do see a private IP address from the specific subnet that I um, had leveraged for private endpoints. So rather than now accessing it over the internet, over a public IP address, I'm accessing my app service uh, via a private IP address over the backbone Azure network. Mm. I think that'll be a very popular, very popular feature. In fact, I know, I know it is a very popular feature. That just doesn't <laughs> make it. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is what um, I had for you uh, from a, a good demonstration perspective um, uh, around how can we secure our app services using service endpoint and private endpoint? So yeah, awesome, mate. That was fantastic. Um, definitely features that a lot of people have wanted for quite a long time. And it's good to see that we've got both service endpoints and uh, private links as well as an option uh, available for our app service plans. So thank you very much, Uncle. Really appreciate you coming and taking out the time for the channel.
Um, we look forward to some more of your sessions in the future. I know you've got a few listed up, so everyone keep your eye out for that. So thanks again. <laughs> Thank you, George, for having me here and hope to see you and all of um, our viewers shortly. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, hope uh, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Uh, feel free to leave any comments and let us know what else you'd like to see in the future. So everyone, bye. Bye.